Oh, hey. Didn't see you come on in. Well, welcome. You're just in time for today's lecture. How are you? My name is Narada, African Hair God, and today I will be giving a class on lock progression. What is lock progression? Anybody out there know? Just go ahead and raise your hand. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Probably not. <laughs> That's okay. We're going to take a moment, sit down, and discuss this together. So, let me get my, my little chair here. All right. <clears throat> First off, how is everyone doing out there? I'm doing fabulous. Thank you so much for asking. All right. Well, <clears throat> As you can see, today we are doing a brief live stream lecture talking about lock progression. We will be doing this by examining my sister's hair, Aaliyah, and from her starter locks up until last month where I retwisted her hair. Now, you may be wondering, why is he speaking like this? It sounds very forced, unnatural and annoying and i would definitely agree with you it does however i'm not really blessed with the gift of gab and um i'm quite aware that i'm not an excellent public speaker and uh one thing that has always annoyed me is that whenever i speak and do videos like this i tend to say um every other word so i found that the only way to avoid umming every other word is to actually take some time and articulate my thoughts and speak in a clear, concise manner. And to do that, I'm going to be speaking like this. And I figured it might be easier for some people out there to understand what I'm saying when I'm not speaking all quickly and fast and with an accent sounding all country and gay and shit, you know? So I will be continuing the video like this. If you find this annoying, and uncomfortable, feel free to dislike, but just understand this probably sounds better than it would if I wasn't speaking like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hmm. All right, so where should we start? Well, um, let's go on over to my other part of the classroom. Oh, hold up, that ain't supposed to be there. Whoops. Um, <clears throat> some technical difficulties. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, first off, I would like for us to take a look at um, Aaliyah's hair. We are going to take a look at her starter locks. So, let me just pull this up. All right. Here we are. Okay. Maybe we should have went full screen. And maybe I should have took all this other stuff down. Okay. Yeah. Let's... Um Let's 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 try it. Let's let's try it and see. Let's get rid of that and that. Okay. Oh, hold on. We need to get rid of that. All right. Perfect. There we go. All right. So we are taking a look at Aaliyah's starter lock. So you may be sitting there wondering, well, these just look like regular old two strand twists to me. And you would be absolutely right. I started her hair with two strand twists. I started her log journey with two strand twists. And this was done, at, uh, let's see, it was the end of February of, what was it, 20, 2020. Mm -hmm. So we're going to say beginning of March, end of February, beginning of March uh, 2020. So... We're going to just take a look. Now, a lot of people would wonder and ask, why did you choose to start her hair or her log journey with two strand twists? Well, there were a number of reasons for this. First off, we all know that you can start locks a multitude of ways. You can start it with two strand twists. You can start it with three strand twists. You can start it with one strand twist, also known as comb coils or finger coils. You can start it off as a wash and go. You can start it off as an afro, you know, if you're into the whole free forming thing. You can start your locks off any way you want. 
the way they grow and develop and mature is going to be dependent on how you choose to manicure and maintain your locks throughout the locking process. Um, does anyone have any questions? All right, good. Hopefully you don't. If you do have any questions, just save it to the end of the lecture and we'll do like a little mini Q&A situation. I'm not going to be here for no two hours for a Q&A, nor am I going to be here for a five hour watch party session, but I will briefly spend some time answering your questions. Just put a tab on it. All right. So one of the reasons that I chose to start off Aaliyah's hair with two string twists is number one, I am quite familiar with her hair. I know that her two strand twists tend to maintain themselves really well, and there have been a number of occasions when I have done her twists, and um, she's kept it in for two months, sometimes even three months, and they still looked fairly decent and maintained themselves. So I already knew that her hair would do fine with starter locks with two strand twists. Um, I also, oh, there I go with the ums. <laughs> I also had to consider her hair situation. Um, uh, um. So Aaliyah has, if you can see, let's go back to the front. Aaliyah has a, very, a rather thin hairline across the front perimeter. Everywhere else her hair is pretty much um, full, um, except for her... Um, alopecia spots. She does suffer from alopecia areata, okay? So she does have just particular areas near the crown of her head where the skin is just really smooth and there's no hair coming out of it, okay? She's dealt with it for years, and yes, there's no cure. Some people have managed to overcome their alopecia. Some people don't. She ain't doing nothing about it. I don't know. It's always been like that. As far as i always known, her hair has always been rather thin along the hairline. Maybe that's due to uh, relaxers in the past or improper um, relaxer applications. I don't know. I don't know. My sister was doing that for her before I started even touching hair. So I don't know. All I know is this is all I've known her hair to be. So my job as a loctician is just to take care of the hair that's on her head and keep it on her head. All right. So another reason that I started her with two strand twists is because her hair, she had spent quite some time away at college. And in that time away from me, she was maintaining her hair herself or letting her friends and other people play in her hair. And unfortunately, I, to my shock and surprise, when she came back to me, her hair was rather damaged and thinning because it was full of breakage everywhere. You probably can't tell because I'm just that dope of a hairstylist to where you can't even see it. However, if you look really close, you can see towards the very ends of her hair, it gets really thinned out and wispy. Now, I could have given her a trim. Honestly, a trim wouldn't have fixed that. She would have had to just go ahead and get a full on haircut but I didn't think it was necessary to take off all of that length. So I just decided to let me make sure this is muted. Okay. I just decided to keep it and just kind of keep an eye on it and watch it progress as her locks mature. And I always told myself if I needed to, I would just trim off what needs to go. Um, her hair had been through enough already, but I already knew going into her lock journey that everything would kind of just level itself out. Her hair would achieve its its health and fullness and thickness over time. And we wouldn't see the thinning at some point. It would just kind of disappear. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and see. Let me play that one more time so you can get the 360. This is the only footage I have of her starter locks, honestly. Um, I didn't do. Here she goes. Hold on, y'all.
All right, sorry about that. There was another teacher in the classroom across the hall. I had to let her know she was being just a tad bit too loud. All right. <clears throat> so, yes, uh, what was I saying? Uh, oh, 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 okay, before I forget, um, I did actually, in my mind, we have always talked about Aaliyah starting her locks. In my mind, I always thought about making her locks smaller. And unfortunately, when she came to me to start her locks, and I saw how broken off her locks were, well, not her locks, but her hair was, I knew that I could not start off her locks the way that I originally envisioned it because it just had gotten to a point where there was so much breakage towards the ends that if I did them smaller, it would not have looked flattering on her. And I also had to consider the fact that because she has, hold on, because she has the thinning around the hairline, as well as the alopecia spots in the crown, I could not make her locks too, too small because those would be potential areas where thinning and breakage would occur. So with all of that considered, I made her locks the sizes that I did because I had to keep in mind that if her alopecia for some reason ends up progressing and spreading, or, you know, her hairline or whatever. I don't expect her hairline to get any thinner than what it has. But my main concern was her alopecia spot. So I had to remember if if her alopecia ends up progressing and getting worse, there has to be enough hair to continue to support the lock if it should happen to lose some of its um, integrity and some of the number of strands that are supporting it. So I think all in all, it ended up working out in her favor, and you will see that soon enough. We haven't had any issues with her hair a year and a half in, so I'm happy to say that much. But preferably, I would have liked to do them a little bit smaller, only because when you are starting locks, you have to think about how the person wants to style their hair in their locks. If the locks are too thick and bulky, certain styles just will not work and will not look good. And um, it's just easier to style smaller locks or medium locks than it is to style juicy larger locks. Okay, so I just wanted to say that. All right, so moving on, we're going to take a look at her locks at three months, I believe. When was this taken? Okay, well let's just let's just look at this video here. Hold on. Mute, mute. There you go. All right, let me move this over here. All right, this is a live stream that I featured on my YouTube channel. This is video number seven fifty three. If you would like to go back and take a look at that. So this is a lock retwist that we are doing on her hair at three months into her journey. So what is that like? June, May, June, something like that. All right, you can see her little alopecia spot there at the top. Notice how her two-strand twists seem to not be as thick or as uh, full. They seem to have kind of compacted and constricted in. That's actually rather typical of both locks, when, uh, starter locks, when you start with two strand twists and or uh, cone coils or finger coils. The hair will go through this process where it'll con uh, contract and expand and contract and expand. And that is what leads up to the hair locking. That along with the accumulation of shed hair being interwoven and interlaced in between the strands, okay? So that's typical. You will also notice that there is quite a bit of frizz everywhere. I know it's not very clear, but um, well, you'll see when we get her to the chair. You will see that her hair is still very much malleable, flexible. You can bend it, fold it. Um, it's still very limp. It's not very solid. And usually within the first few months or so, it takes some time for the, the locks to really start to solidify. It, it usually takes about 
eight months to a year before they really start feeling solid. Okay. Uh, so, oh, back it up. Too went too far. It's a little blurry. It will clear up as we go on. Let me see. All right. So this is her. Oh, it is really blurry. What is this? 144p? Sheesh. All right. So you can see the remnants of, well, hopefully you can see. <laughs> Let me see. Does this clear up? It's Okay. That, that's much better. All right. Let's pause this here. You can still see the two strand twist definition here. You can see that her, the ends of her hair are still low, loose little coils and things. And like I said, you can really see just how constricted the locks are here versus when it was here. Huge difference. Okay. The hair is in fact very frizzy. It's going to be frizzy. The locks are still very soft. The the hair hasn't solidified yet, so that is typical. And I think that is mostly what I wanted you all to take from here. I had been maintaining her hair from beginning to now, and we only use hair grease, a variety of hair greases. I, I like softy, so I use softy. I've used other things, nature's blessing, things of that sort. So now what I am doing here, I'm not too sure and twisted. I'm just taking loose hair that's kind of slipped out and just wrapping it into the lock. You can really see, hold on, go back. You can really see just how skinny and skimpy the locks look here. They always start off looking very, very narrow and thin. And as they progress and mature, they have a tendency to swell. Y'all will see that as we move further into her lock journey. But you have to consider that. And that was something I always considered. Even though her locks look very like thin here, I knew that at some point, just because whenever I did two strand twists with, with her hair, they always expanded larger than... I initially did the twist. So I already knew that her hair was going to do that with the locks as well. I just didn't know how much. So whenever you are starting locks, you have to consider the starter locks swelling larger than you start them off at if you are considering the size that you're going for. So you always have to go a little bit smaller than the size that you intend. Does that make sense? All right, moving right along. So again, just wrapping that fly away. I get a lot of questions about People talking about the flyaways with their locks. I just wrap it in. You know, they have this this fancy thing now where they're locksmithing and rolling their hands on the locks and things. This has been working fine for me. And I will continue to use that. Okay, and we're vaping and drinking. Wow, okay. Vaping and drinking while you're getting your hair done. All right, so let's see. One thing I always did, and y'all should be used to this with Aaliyah's hair by now, I always, when I do the retwist, I always two-strand twist her retwist. You can opt to not two-strand twist and just use the clips and sit under the dryer. Her and most of my other clients prefer not to sit under the dryer. They prefer to have their hair styled as it's retwisted. This helps the retwist to last longer. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's quicker. Like, for me, I think we finished her hair in like an hour, hour and a half at most. And so what else should I mention? Uh, outside of the two strand twist, I do not like to put styles on starter locks, especially locks this early in the game, because you don't want to impede on how the lock will solidify and mature if you put too many bends and fold as the locks are maturing and solidifying you'll start to notice in in not imperfections but you'll start to notice inconsistencies along the length of the lock so just to prevent that as much as possible um we avoided most styles um in the early stages i did try to play around with the idea of styling her hair in the beginning but my sister is actually very simple. She just likes her two strand twists. It just, like I say, helps the retwist last longer. Another question I get how often to retwist for her. Oh, I was just putting hair grease. That's all. Um, for her, I, what was I going to say? See, my mind is all over the place. 
Um, it's going to come to me. It's going to come to me. Oh, I get asked how often um, I do retwists. So when I, I typically tell my clients, um, retwists every month or so, especially in the early beginning stages of her locks, every month, every four weeks. As the lock becomes more mature and solidified, then you can kind of venture out and see how long you can go in between retwists. Uh, but typically speaking, I like for my clients to come in anywhere from one to two months in between retwists. Um, it just works out better that way. If you go a little bit longer than that, your parts will end up missing. Like her hair has memory. Like in the early stages, you're trying to create consistency and memory in the hair. And because the hair is still soft and flowing all over the place, you have to give the hair a bit more direction in these early stages than you do when it's more solidified and matured. Okay. All right. Moving on. <clears throat> Let's see what it looked like at the end. Okay, you look like skinny to, oh, hold up, what are we talking? She must have been under the dryer. Okay, scratch all that, I did end up styling her hair. <laughs> Practice what you preach, sir. So I must have just um, set her hair in the two strand twist that I could put it in this little situation here. It's just a double barrel situation. Again, you can watch this on video number 753 if you're interested in that, but I got pictures, so. All right, we're gonna close that out and close this out, and we're going to open this up. So this must have been the next month or whatever. And I know this picture is blurry, but this is all I had. This was her next retwist. You can still see her hair is very frizzy. Um, you see less of the two strand twist pattern, but it is still there. You can see her locks are still rather skimpy. You can see the ends are still loose and open. And here's a close up of how it's looking. So yeah, more of the twist is disappearing. It's still apparent. You can still see her hair. Like I said, it's loose and open. But it's starting to look more like locks. It takes a while for the twist to fade. It does. Um, it takes even longer for braids to disappear if you do braid locks. Coils, The one of the reasons why I like starting locks with comb coils is because they just give the most consistency within the lock progression. So the coils tend to fade much easier and quicker than the twists and the braids, but um, it's not that one is better than the other. It's just whatever is better for that person, their hair, personal preference, how they wear their hair and things like that. Also the size matters too. I wouldn't typically start uh, a person's locks with comb coils if they wanted really large locks. So it all just depends on like everything. It's, it's so many different factors. All right, and this was back when she let me style her hair. I don't think she liked it so much. I think she felt like it made her look bald or something, but I thought it was cute. All right. That's it. Either that or I think she was also a little um little insecure about her forehead. But I'm like, girl, we, we like our family just got big foreheads. Like you gotta deal with it. Like you gotta deal with it. All right. So now we are going to take a look at her hair at one year in her lock journey. So let's see. Oh, look at my old setup. Okay. Ooh, I was packing then. Jesus. I thought I was heavy now, but Lord. All right. So, let's see. Uh, okay. Oh, here. Okay, we're one year in. You can see the entire two-strand twist situation is not there at all. You will also notice, if I pause this, you will also notice 
that her ends have sealed up and are no longer loose, except for a, a few areas. This was um, one of her starter locks that was rather thin um, at the beginning where she had the most thinning and breakage. So that took a little bit longer, but you will see that her hair is her hair too is also solidifying really well. So the locks have become much more stiff and rigid. They're not as malleable and flexible. It's still it's still kind of soft, but not as much as it was when the twists were still apparent. So when you are retwisting locks, what you are doing, um, a lot of people ask me why I use a comb to smooth out the new growth and comb it down if the whole point of the lock is to be matted. It's not that we're combing out the locks. What I'm doing when I use a comb and when other people use a comb is that we're trying to encourage consistent lock progression. So it's almost like when you try to two-strand twist curly hair that hasn't been smooth, what happens? Like you get all these lumps and bumps in your twist because it's all these different folds and bends in your curls that are jutting out from the twist that you're trying to create like with the smooth twist. So all that we're doing when we use the comb is just literally smoothing out and pushing down the shed hair into the lock portion of the hair so that you get more even and consistent lock progression as the lock grows out. Does that make sense? All right, continuing on. So at this point, same old, same old, still using the hair grease. We just washed her hair and can't see nothing here, so we're gonna skip. Use an ultra sheen now, all right. Still no build up. And just because we've been doing her hair a month at a time, you can see the parts are still there. The parts are there. All I'm doing is using the comb to redefine where it is. Just because we train. Now the hair is still loose at the roots, so sometimes they'll still slip around and bounce around and things and mat together. That's another thing I wanted to point out too. Uh, let me go back. Let me backtrack a little bit. I know I'm all over the place. If we go to her first, her retwist at three months, I believe when we took her to the bowl, it took her out of the bowl rather, I believe I had to pop her roots. Let me see. Okay, there it is, yep, mm-hmm. And I think I, I was talking about it in the live stream, but I had to actually pull her roots apart because they were so loose and open that they were just kind of starting to web and kind of mat together, and you definitely want to discourage that, especially in the early stages with your starter locks. If you do happen to wash it on your own or get it wet, you just want to make sure that your locks remain separate so that they don't web together. Otherwise, you're going to end up freeforming, all right? Okay, now like, let's bring it back. Is it possible to undo... Well, oh, hold up. Questions at the end. Questions at the end. All right. Stay focused. You, you, the way my mind's set up, I can't, I can't, mm, -mm. All right, so. Trying to see. You can see her, her hair is still rather frizzy throughout the length of the lock. A little more so back then than it is now. So again, I'm still just kind of taking the hair and wrapping it around trying to train the hair to remain in the lock. Of course, it's gonna loosen up and do what it's gonna do, but just by continuing to do that over and over and over again, we're creating memory and behavior for the hair to remain where we want it to be. We're just kind of reinforcing and encouraging the strands to remain in the lock, okay? Still just maintaining her hair with the two strand twist. She liked the twist. All right, y'all can check out the lock retwist. This is actually video number 834, titled Aaliyah's One Year Lock Retwist, if you would like to check that out. You guys have seen me retwist plenty of times, so there's no need for us to watch that. Uh, I, I wanna get a look at me separating the locks, just so you can see how 
define they are. So we see there's really not any more webbing. And that's also because I don't have her wait so long in between her retwists. If she went like two months or three months, then as the hair starts to grow out, it would start to kind of web together. So just to, like I said, in the early parts of the lock journey, like that first year or so, every month works really works best because if you start to go further in between there's more chances for you to have to pop and break strands of hair to separate and some of these people are even cutting hair to redefine parts which is crazy to me so yeah definitely more maintenance in the beginning and less as the locks mature all right that's that actually let me see I have pictures. Yes, I do. I have pictures. All right, so this was her hair before we added the color. This was about, mm, this was May. So this was like three months after her one year mark. She started her lock journey in February, the end of February, beginning of March of 2020. So this is like May 2021. One year in, she decided, I want my color. I was like, okay, cool. Let's do it, and bam, we got the color. Although the color didn't come out the way we intended, it still worked out in the end. I do have videos, video number 857, which I conveniently downloaded. This messy application that somebody tried to school me in and say I needed to watch Mondo Brad Mondo to learn how to color some hair because I had to resort to box color, but she didn't know what she was talking about. So, all right. Um, what was I trying to show here? Oh, I mean, you can see her locks at this point are still continuing to swell a bit more. You can see her hair is not falling down, it's sticking up more. So it's becoming more and more solid and rigid. You can see if she would sit her ass back. Leah, sit still. You can see she still has a few pieces here and there where the ends are still loose and open. It's still, it's butted at the ends, but it just takes a little bit longer because it's so thin. Who said that? Child, a mess. Don't even worry about that. All right, and I believe this was the after. Okay, we were finishing up the retwist. All right, same thing. Nothing really to make note of here. Maybe except that, I don't know if I mentioned this. Maybe except that there's less frizz along the length of the lock. And let me see if I can pull it up so you can see. This was after her hair was, wait, did we wash it yet? Yeah, we did. We had shampooed her, well, yeah, yeah. We shampooed her hair. And you can see there is frizz within the locks, but it's not as frizzy as it was before. Like, and it's because all of those little stray strands are starting to get pulled into the lock itself. And that's also helping to solidify and make it more rigid and solid, okay? So again, this is at a year and a few months in, all right? And that's all I wanted to show you here. All right, we're almost done. We're almost done. Let's see, we're at, oh shit, where did I? Where did I save it? Oh, I didn't save it, that's right. All right, so this was her most recent lock retwist. I did this before her Halloween birthday for her little costume situation, so I'm gonna show you that. This is actually footage I wanted, that I'm planning on using for my Patreon uh, and channel members only videos. All right, so this is a shampooing her hair before the retwist. Again, you can see 
while there is some flyaways and frizz, is nowhere near as frizzy as it was before. The hair is so much more solid. Her locks are way more mature and solidified. And um, the hair appears dull. It, it's not as much shine and sheen as it was when she had, well, not that, but when she had her initial starter locks with the two strand twists. And that's because the strands are just kind of going in and out all over the place. They're not laying in a smooth and consistent way. Because of that, they don't reflect or bounce off light in a way they kind of diffract it and like disperse it. So you don't get as much natural shine from your locks. Most people don't. So yeah, that's another thing. See what's going on with this shampoo here. Oh yes. Oh. Oh yeah. Get get the measures. Get the measures. All right. All right. So at this point, we're still retwisting her hair once a month. Um, and at this point, honestly, she could go a little bit longer. If you can see, you can still see the parts in between her locks so she could go maybe a couple of weeks or even two months maybe i would say she would be able to stretch it if she wanted to i honestly think she kind of prefers to have her hair maintained more regularly i think i've just kind of got her used to it so yeah all right so just clarifying here mm-hmm mm -hmm. i'm gonna talk more about that on the patreon all right Getting that hair nice and clean. Squeezing that end of the lock. Okay, all right, all right. And now, let's take a look. Ooh, ah. All right, so yes, again, this was last month. All right. Trying to see what's going on here. It it looks like a completely different hair to hair, but that's literally just that's what happens. You maintain your, your two strand twist, and this is what happens. All right. Let's see. Okay. Uh that's pretty much it. So if you guys have any questions. This would be the time to go ahead and ask it, all right? I'm going to just kind of let this play out a little bit while y'all go ahead and ask me your questions. What would you like to know? Any advice if you notice a lock partially unraveled at a point but had already started to lock up flatly because of the separation so it's not really feasible to just retwist not entirely sure what's going on or what you're particularly asking me but that sounds very specific would it become an issue if you start locks in a clockwise direction let somebody else do them and they twist counterclockwise that's a question that uh i get asked a lot and it's not going to make or break your locks. Um, you definitely want to go in the same direction just for consistency purposes. But whether you twist clockwise or counterclockwise, it's, it's going to do the same thing, honestly. All right. I will just say, though, you don't want to bounce back and forth between interlocking and retwisting. Like you can, if you interlocked for a while or you retwist for a while and you decide, I want to interlock now instead of retwist because I want my retwist to last longer or whatever. That's fine. You just don't want to go back and forth because that could create too many inconsistencies in your locks. Uh, let's see. All right. How do you remove residue from locks? So the best way to avoid residue in your locks is to avoid product buildup in the first place so with the leah's hair and i'll go back 
With Aaliyah's hair, I actually never applied any conditioner to her hair. I only shampooed her hair. Um, I know there are plenty of people that, you know, use conditioner, have no problems with it and things of that sort. I have no issue with not conditioning locks. I did my locks the same way. I didn't use conditioner and um, I found that it was ideal for me. But then again, I use heavier products. I use hair grease and that kind of serves as my conditioner in a sense. But not even just saying conditioner causes buildup, but the best way to avoid like buildup in your locks is to avoid excessive use of products. So I'm very moderate and minimal with the amount of hair grease that I use. That's literally the only product that I use. It washes out really easily from the locks from what you can see. And so um, you definitely want to use things that are more, if you're not going to use grease, if you're going to use something else, you want to use things that are more easily cleansed with shampoo and water. Keep the products light. Um, I don't recommend globbing on a bunch of gel, jam, or things like that. You can definitely use those products. You just need to be moderate with how you use them. Now, as far as how you pull them out, you either going to have to do a harsh treatment known as a lock bath where you got baking soda and uh, like apple cider vinegar and lemon juice and all this different things. Now you start playing around with the pH of your hair and things, you shifting around the pH and things and doing chemical reactions with the hair. So you don't wanna do that too often, but I do know there are some people that do that about once a year. Um, thankfully, Aaliyah has no need for that in her locks um, right now or it's looking like anytime soon. So um, what we're doing with her hair seems to be working, so. Um, yeah, that, from my understanding, that's really the only way that you're going to be able to pull out stubborn buildup out of the locks. And sometimes you, that takes more than just one process. So, uh, do you think you would ever get bored and decide to grow your locks back? Well, Hey, y'all have to remember, I, every time I do hair, like I'm hurting my hands. So to like grow out my hair to just have hair, I have to maintain my hair. So that would mean that's another head of hair for me to do. So with my hands being the situation that it is, that's not even really feasible. It's actually a great thing that I'm, I'm bald right now because if I had to do my hair, um, it, it wouldn't work out really well. Like even just last night, um, my fingers were blistering up really bad. So um, yeah, that... that I, I I think I'm good. I Like I said, I get all of my creativity and fun with hair doing my clients' hair, so I don't really need to have hair. I think at this point in my life, I'm just kind of content with being bald. I, I, oh, by the way, I meant to say, if you want to see how uh, my locks progressed, I have a video of that as well. If we go to my channel. Y'all probably have seen it already, but if you haven't, You can see my, my hair from starter locks. I started with comb coils, so you can kind of examine and compare the difference. You can see in this uh, video in particular, more of the lock budding stages and things like that, that I went through watching my locks bud at different points. Aaliyah's, you couldn't really see it as much uh, with her hair being in twists, but it's, it does still happen whether you twist or coil. It's just with her, it didn't happen as much. So this is video 689, and I would copy and paste the link, but hold on. And let's do this. Go through all these changes real quick. I'm trying to give you the link. All right, there we go. For anyone who's interested in that, you can check that out. All right. Next question. How long before your locks drop? It That's very specific to each person. Um, it depends on your hair, how quickly your hair locks. It depends on how large your locks are, how small they are. Um, it depends on how often you retwist in things. Like if you're freeforming, your, your locks ain't dropping for quite some time. But if you, you know, I'm assuming you mean like people who maintain their locks, but it can take anywhere from eight months to a year. 
but yeah. Um, I will say if your locks are much smaller, it tends to take a little bit longer for them to mature and solidify more. Um, and I think that's because it's less hair that is collectively swelling and contracting and less shedded hair that is being intertwined in between the locks. So it just takes a little bit longer. Hold on, the chat jumping. Uh, my daughter's locks tend to stick together like static. Is there something I can do to keep them from sticking together and having to constantly pop them? Where are they sticking? Are they sticking at the roots? Are they sticking at the ends? Are they sticking at the mid strand? Is there a lot of loose hair in her locks? And how long has she had her locks? Brushing your mature locks with a boar bristle will reduce residue. I don't think that's true necessarily. They they say brushing does all these magical things. It makes your, your locks shiny. It pulls out all this lint that just happened to be ingrained in your locks. Now, with the shining things, I can understand. But honestly, I, I don't see the point in all of that. Now, I, I don't know. I'll just say I haven't seen it work. But it, I ain't saying it won't work. I ain't saying that. Uh, hey, Narada, a few of my locks still have twists on the ends. I can tell that they are becoming tangled, but not quite there yet. Is this normal? Is there anything I can do to make it lock faster? Um, it's only because your locks are just much smaller. So like I was saying, it just takes it a little bit longer for it to like bud and seal up, especially at the ends. So if you, if you recall when we were looking at Aaliyah's hair, which I need to put that back up. If you recall, when we were looking, like, as her hair was maturing, those areas where there were less hair, like, collectively at the ends where she had more thinning, it took longer for those locks to actually seal up and, like, bud up at the ends of the lock. Um, so just because your hair is kind of, like, in the same situation, there's less hair there, and so it just takes more time for that the ends to seal up. As far as, like, what you could do... Um, I would just suggest you just let it be and it'll do it on its own time. Like it will literally do it and you won't notice it. Like you'll wake up and you'll be like, what happened to my ends? Um, sometimes I will say, depending on how loose your texture is, it may only seal up to a certain point. If it bothers you that much, um, you can always cut it off. And, you know, it's not like your locks are going to unravel or anything. Um, it's just personal aesthetic. It's like you just want your locks to be even and consistent throughout. So I get that. Um, but, yeah, uh, just give it time. Is there any advice to help fix up inconsistencies in the lock as best as possible? There's different ways that locks can have inconsistencies. Like, it depends on where the inconsistency is, why it's there. It's just, it's too many unknown variables and factors in there. Um, hey, everybody. Does sea salt spray really help work for locking faster? Oh, great question. I don't know if sea salt actually helps. I don't think it does, honestly. I will say when I did my starter locks, one thing that I always did, I always kept a water bottle. And every morning when I woke up, I would always mist my hair lightly with some water. Literally just lightly. I, I'm not trying to drench it or anything. I just want my hair to get that water so that it can expand and contract, swell and contract. And like I said, that is what actually encourages the locking process. And I will say that my hair locked up pretty quickly like within the second month or so it was pretty much like if i wanted to pick out my locks i would literally have to take time and really work to pick out my locks because it it locked up pretty quick um so i don't think you have to necessarily have sea salt i think if you just like mist your hair with water it helps the process in general so all right Yes, you are late, Sandy. Class is almost over. Someone just asked me, what should she do to prevent lock thinning? Any suggestions? Well, um, lock thinning occurs for a number of reasons. Um, it can occur 
from alopecia or hair loss. It can occur from breakage, especially towards the roots. If you look and see me working through the roots, you'll see I don't actually break any hair. When I part, I literally just slip the strands out and place them where they need to be. I never do any breaking. A lot of locticians and all these people will say, combs are terrible for your locks and you shouldn't use combs because it's going to break your locks. No, bitch, you just don't know what the fuck you're doing. Like, you, you just don't know what you're doing. We've been parting our hair with combs for years. Why, do, why we can't use combs all of a sudden? Because you got locks. It's all in knowing how to use it. So, um, avoiding breakage, keeping your locks moisturized, um... Avoid excessive tension, especially on areas where you're you have thinner or smaller locks. Um, I'm trying to think what else could be the culprit. That's really it. Avoid excessive buildup on those areas as well. Um, but thinning doesn't thinning usually occurs for some reason. So if you start to notice thinning, you need to address what change is happening to your hair. And you need to actually rectify to stop the thinning from getting worse. Um, somebody sent me a picture of their son's locks. And they noticed that their, their son's locks was thinning uh, at the top. And so I started asking questions. I'm like, how long did you notice the thinning was occurring? Um, has anything changed? Has anything been going on? Has he been scratching there? Turns out the culprit was he, he likes to scratch his scalp. Um if all that scratching eventually ended up in him creating a, a lot of breakage in a concentrated area, and I've actually seen that happen in real time in person on um, Henny's son, he used to have locks, and he had this, um, this just this habit of just scratching his head. And I would always ask him, I'm like, does your head itch? Like, does it itch at all? Like, why are you scratching? He's like, no, it doesn't. But, you know, as kids, like, sometimes they just have those weird like habits, like they're just doing things just because, um, but yeah, so it, it's usually from something happening or some reason. So, um, yeah, what does drop mean? That just means the the lock gain, gains weight and actually starts falling. And, um, oh, funny that you mentioned that a lot of people will say that when they do, when they are growing out their locks, they're noticing that their locks are not like growing as fast. Like it gets to a point where it's, it seems like it's not growing, but you have to consider that your hair is full of curls and shrinkage. And that doesn't just stop because you all of a sudden decide you want to like have locks. Um, you're going to notice more shrinkage with longer hair. Like people who have longer hair and start locks will notice that their hair will draw up significantly when they do their starter locks and actually grow out their locks um, versus people who start off with shorter hair and are growing their hair out with the locks. Their hair tends to mature quicker um, and they don't experience as much shrinkage because it's less hair to actually shrink. So it's not as drastic of a difference in length as it is with longer hair, like with Aaliyah's. So, um, yeah, they just mean when the, the, the lock starts solidifying, gaining weight and actually starts dropping. Like you see Aaliyah's hair doing here on the side, like just dropping. Um, let's see. Yeah, I hope this chat quit. Oh, y'all is okay. Do tighter curl patterns lock faster than looser curl patterns? Um, yes, definitely. So, um, but ultimately it depends on how large or how small your locks are. Uh, I've seen, I've seen large locks lock up pretty quick and I've seen small locks lock up pretty quick as well. It just, I think it's really a textural thing, but it's, it's a lot of factors that tie into that. But yes, the, um, the tighter your curl pattern and I noticed that the coarser your texture rigidity, meaning like how wiry or how firm your hair texture gets when it's dry um meaning the opposite of really soft silky hair um that hair tends to lock up really quick so the tighter the texture and also the coarser the texture um can you do a video 
or a demonstration on how to take out locks and the best product to use. Mm, I ain't really taking out nobody's locks right now. So there's videos out there already of people taking out locks. There is a proper way and technique and things, but um, literally it's just you taking out matted hair and it, it it's just water conditioner and a comb. You water conditioner and a comb. Some people say a fork and this and that. A fine tooth comb is going to be your best friend because you're going to have to actually pull out and slip out individual strands of hair. The same way that I'm doing here. Oh, see, it's pulling right there. She like, it's pulling. See, you got to listen to your client people. The same way that I'm doing here where I'm like separating the roots and like slipping out strands. That's literally what you got to do when you are taking down locks. It's just very tedious. It's nothing to really watch and learn. It's just you got to do it. Oh, you washed her hair with the hair jewelry still on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't I don't take those out. <laughs> um, they tarnish a little bit, but it doesn't it had, when we took it out to do her color, um, it didn't like leave any weird um discolorations or anything on her hair, so it was fine. It's just some um I don't know what the material is, but it's it's some type of like steel metal beads, so uh Shall we be getting regular trims? I haven't gotten a single trim for my two-year locks, but my locks seem happy. If you don't need it, don't get it. Trim for what? What you got? Split ends? <laughs> um, I would say if you are trimming with locks, it should be with purpose, meaning that you're either like trimming up some like loose hairs or some flyaways, like, you know, maybe like some some part of your locks that you just don't care for. Like maybe you, this little wispy here on the side, you're like, I'm tired of this little curl just in here. Let me cut this off. Like, okay, you can trim that. Or if you want to add some layers to your locks just to kind of lighten the weight and like increase like how it falls, like the, the flow of your locks, you can do that. Or if you prefer your locks to hit like at a blunt cut, you can cut for that. Um, just for shape, but like not to just trim for maintenance. It's not going to like help it grow or anything because your locks is a conveyor belt. It's growing from the root out. So as long as the ends ain't breaking off, you're good. Now, if you got damage on the ends, then yeah, you might need to, you know, you got some damage or thinning. You might need to repair that or trim it off. But yeah, it just needs to be done with purpose. My locks would web up at the root when I wasn't using combs. It caused more damage. Then I was trying to prevent. Yeah, I can see that happening. If I have low density hair, will I have low density locks? Um, it's complicated. <laughs> Cause low density looks different on everybody. Um, I know y'all don't really think it, but Aaliyah would be considered in between low and medium like she's not really medium density like her strands are just more on the thicker side but she actually does not have like if i was to like put her hair in a like strain her hair and put it in a ponytail you would see it but it's just because her strands are a little bit larger that it make and her hair expands more that it looks like her hair is really thick but you gotta remember she got thinning on the front she got ball patches at the top like, she actually doesn't have a lot of hair. Like, so low density looks different on everybody. It also depends on um, how big or how small your locks are. Um, your locks can be low density if you get larger locks. Like, if you walk around with 20 locks, then, yeah, it's going to, you're going to have some thick, juicy locks, but they just go, <laughs> it's not going to be very, a lot of locks. So it's, it's a lot of factors that kind of play into that. Oh, also, when I'm doing starter locks, I think I mentioned this already, but um, it's a little bit different than just doing regular O2 strand twists. Like, you have to think about the lock placement and, like, how you are positioning where the locks are going to form and develop. Um, like I said, with her thinning in the front, I made those locks a little bit larger to compensate for the thinning that she had in the front. If I was consistent in the front with these size partings, her locks would be incredibly thin. So you have to take all of that into consideration when you are starting off your locks or starting off somebody else's locks. Like the difference in density, 
matters. You have to account for that when you are creating your lock to part ratio, whatever the fuck that means. All right, fun shape. <laughs> oh, y'all can't hear it. I got the thing muted. All right, let me see. Um, I'm trying to see, maybe, let me see if I have somebody on my Instagram with low density hair. Maybe that would give more perspective. Yeah, let's see. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. Definitely not low density. Oh, there go Leah here. Uh, da, 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 da. She has low density, but she could still have she could still have full locks. Um it's just her locks wouldn't expand as much, that's all. So I don't know if you're asking like if your locks would ever be like really, really full. No. Her locks would be like more um thinner and narrow, but it wouldn't it, it her 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 locks wouldn't look thin. She has hair. She just doesn't have as much hair as somebody else. That's all. Um that's a terrible example because she ain't got locks, but I'm trying to see. I can't find anybody. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is going to work. All right, I tried. Um, my son's locks still haven't dropped yet, and his are almost four years old. His locks are juicy too, ain't it? Um, all right, we're finishing up here. Would you suggest a person comb their locks out or just cut them and start over? Um, if they were unhappy with it, um, that's up to them because that, like, that's that's time and investment that they're gonna have to put forth into their hair. So, um, if they want to do it themselves, they can do that. Um, the easiest way would be to, I would say, to just grow it out. And, like, not retwist as long as you can stand it and then, like, cut up to a certain point and maybe, like, pick out, instead of the full length of the lock, maybe, like, a shorter length of it. Make it easier on yourself. That's a possibility. Um, most people, they want to keep all the length. But if it's, if it's damage, like, if you're trying to hold on to damage, you know, cut that off. Cut that off. But if it's healthy and you can salvage it, then, you know, it's worth it, in my opinion. Okay, um, hold on, the chat is jumping, all right, people use forks in their hair, what in the little, mer they do, I've heard, I've watched people say they use a fork to pick out their locks, I want locks, but I'm scared mine will look thin, I have a lot of hair, but when I put it in twists, you wonder where it all went, well, I don't know. You got to it's it's one of those things you you're not going to know how your locks look until you know how they look. Like I didn't know how much Aaliyah's hair was going to swell until it swelled as much as it swelled. So can you talk about marrying and combining locks when would it be necessary? It should never be necessary. That's the crazy thing. If if you have to combine locks, that means somewhere down the line you did something wrong or your foundation was wrong. I've never had to combine any of my clients' locks. Like, I've never had to combine it because I already take into consideration, like, okay, this area is a little thin. It's going to need more hair to support. It's going to need more hair to be as full and as thick as the adjacent locks behind it. So if you have to combine and marry locks, you're trying to conceal damage and thinning and breakage or something. Something's happening. Something's happening that's causing you to combine but like my clients don't ever have to do that so i'll say that i'm not particularly knowledgeable in combining locks and things like that because I, I ain't got them issues are her locks considered medium size Aaliyah's? hmm yeah 
Yeah. Let me see if I can go back to her. Yeah, her her locks are medium. Uh, they're definitely not small. I think she has like sixty locks or something like that, or maybe even less than that. She doesn't she doesn't have a lot. Okay. Um. You are persistent. I love how you don't allow a thing to hinder your successes. Eh, that ain't necessarily true. Sometimes we as people are afraid of our own greatness, and sometimes we hold ourselves back, myself included. What's your opinion on grab and go pardon? Um, if it works, it works. I I'm not a I'm not against it at all, honestly. Um I would I would imagine it would be easier for somebody maintaining their hair themselves. I would just say just make sure that you have clean, not clean like pristine looking partings, but just make sure you're not grabbing stray strands from like all the way over here coming all the way up here. You know, like just make sure that it's somewhat neat and it's fine. Like everyone doesn't need to have pristine crystal neat partings, you know. Um you should do a stream that showcases your followers' hair. Hmm. What about my sister's locks? You have her pick, I believe. Hold on. Oh, she definitely ain't got no uh no fine hair or no low density. She's here somewhere. Let me see. Where's she at? There she goes! Yeah, she ain't in that category. Like, she she just she ain't in that category. Like, <laughs> she has fifty seven. I remember the count. Okay, ooh, okay, you better than me. Is it a good idea to keep up with the number of locks you have, or why is that important? Um, no, unless it's changing. I mean, the only reason I would try to remember is if somebody has like an odd number of locks. I try to remember that with my clients um, just because I always retwist with two strand twists and I never want the bulky three strand twist to be up in the front where everybody can see it. What's your opinion on popping separating freeform locks? Is there an opinion to be had on that though? That's the question because it's freeform. So it's like, it's whatever you want it to be, right? I don't I don't really have too much thoughts on freeform locks because it's it goes against all like um it goes against everything that stylists do. Not to say that that's a bad thing or anything, but the the whole point of freeform is to like not restrict yourselves to hair maintenance and parting and combing and smoothing and retwisting. So it, it doesn't really, is it damaging? Well, freeform locks isn't necessarily healthy. It's, I mean, if you look at people's freeform locks, let's see. But I don't, I don't think the goal for freeform locks is to be healthy. It's, it's to just let your hair do what it wants to do. So if you, let me see who's actually free for them because they put anybody on here. Okay, he's definitely free for him. Yeah, like if you if you look like if we're talking about what's healthy, it's not You can see he has a bunch of like breakage at the front of his head, but again, that's not really a concern for them because they're they're just allowing the hair to be what it is. You tend to notice a lot of breakage, especially along the hairline with freeform locks. At least I do. Um, but yeah, the the hair is not just pristinely healthy just because you leave it be. Um, so, J Cole, what does his locks look like? I don't even know what he looks like. Oh, he kind of looks like my cousin. Mm. 
I mean, see, you can see it right there. It's, it, it's, it never fails. You can see it right there. See? Same thing. So th th that's, that's what I mean. It, it goes against what we do as far as, like, maintaining hair. Th th that's not really the point. I was asking more if popping semi-free form is healthy, okay. Um... I don't know. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really handle free form, semi free form like that. I think it really depends on the situation and how um, webbed it is. Uh, I think at a certain point, yeah, you probably would be doing damage. But that's why if you're going to semi free form, then you need to make sure that you're at least being consistent with semi free forming. But that's very, it's a very specific. Um, question that does it, like I can't give like a general answer for that um uh, da, 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 breakage galore <laughs> uh they don't care about health just the aesthetic yeah yeah Thank you for taking the time to answer my questions. You're welcome. All right, does anybody have any more questions? Um, I'm actually enjoying the little Q. Oh, y'all ain't supposed to be on this screen. I'm actually enjoying the, the Q&A. Um, I'll just let that scroll. Um, my little bro has free from locks. Breakage is present. Yeah, it's going to be just from how the hair is like, Pulling and falling and things. It's bound to happen. Oh no, those are those probably aren't new sponsors. Those are those are probably like reoccurring ones. Like I don't know. For some reason, they just kind of clump a bunch of people. <laughs> uh I, I think Stream Elements does that when they like renew their membership. Wonder why it breaks in the front? Mm, who knows? Um, you know, the, the front tends to be really fragile and maybe that that's one thing I noticed though. Like some people, like I, I hear a lot of people say like, I'm semi free forming and I'm going like six months, eight months in between retwists. Like some people, they can't leave their hairline like alone for six months, eight months. Like it'll start thinning. It'll start breaking. It'll start separating from the lock. I've seen it happen. Why do people get those flat locks? Um, not maintaining their locks. Um, and that, and it, it's usually just because the locks is really, really big. And so it, if you lay on it a certain way, or if you consistently, like if you don't create consistency with how you wear it, it'll just naturally flatten out, I think. Any tips for anyone who wants to self-maintain from start but always gets scared of the first wash? The first wash is always the worst. If you can get past the first wash, you're in there. You're in there. It, no wash is going to be as bad as that first wash. When retwisting, does it matter the way you put the clips on? Um, no, whatever holds, as long as it ain't pulling. And um, if you go under the dryer, just make sure that you um, don't set the dryer to too high. Otherwise, the clips will get really, really hot. And that's not good. It's not good. How often should re should retwist happen? Um, should is relative. But um, I would say anywhere from one to three months. That's my opinion. Anything beyond that can't guarantee that your, your locks ain't going to start thinning. You ain't going to need to start combining. You're not going to have breakage. Like, I can't guarantee nothing past that. Um, personally, I don't like to go too long in between lock retwists because it makes my job harder. And if you make my job harder, I'm going to, like, charge you more. Because I literally, there's a, I, I know, like, if you look, if you look at her hair, like the parts are there. It just needs to be redefined. Like, and it's only because she comes to me regularly and we have her hair maintained. 
and it's not a mini afro growing where her new growth is like can you imagine this being a in, like an inch and a half longer than this like i'm i'm literally like creating new locks at this point like nah i'm charging son i'm charging Um, can locks really get mold or mildew if you never sit under the dryer? Um, yeah, I can. It definitely can. Not if you don't sit under the dryer, but your, your hair needs to lock. I mean, not lock, but it needs to dry. If you have moisture just sitting there, that's not a good situation. And that's actually unhealthy for your hair. Um, uh, and that can potentially cause thinning as well. That can, um, affect the integrity of the strength of the hair and cause your locks to thin. Explain color damage with locks. How is it eating up the hair if you're natural and in a protective style? Um, again, it's damaging the integrity of the hair. So if the hair is no can no longer support the weight, it's going to thin out and break. Um, it, protective style don't, don't save your hair from being... <laughs> from breaking it just it's just holding it there and at some point it's not going to be able to hold it the strength still has to be there the integrity has to be there um when can you start stretching out your retwists oh um so i said um when your locks get at a point where they start where they're like they're rather solid so with Aaliyah, I think she's starting to get to that point and she's like well beyond a year, like, yeah, a year and a half in. So for her, she could probably stretch it out two months if she wanted to. I'm kind of discouraging her from doing that because her locks are doing so well. And um, yeah, but if she really wanted to, she could. But I think it's just really important that the locks themselves are well established and once your locks get to a point where you, you know, you wash your hair and your parts are still there, you could probably stretch it out a little bit more. But that amount of time is going to be different for each person. You kind of have to see what's normal for or what's feasible for your hair, your size of locks, your texture. Because for some people, if they go too long, that afro starts webbing together. So you got to kind of figure out, like, is two months good for me? Is six weeks good for me? Uh, I don't recommend any further than two months. But usually at about a year, year and a half or so. Um, high growth fatigue. You talked about that with the steamer and how it damaged your hair. Yeah, nobody believed me. Everyone said it was my fault because I sat under there too long. I mean, they true, but they right. But, I mean, that's like saying, the flat iron didn't damage your hair. The stylist damaged your hair because they used the flat iron wrong. Okay, well, it's still, like, burnt up my hair. Like, I mean, we're, we're comparing an apple to the apple tree. It, like, either way it go, the apple came from the tree. Um, Do you have suggestions for those who have dandruff and locks? I have sister locks, by the way. Um... Yeah, use um, medicated shampoos. Um, I'm currently using the Design Essentials Therapeutics for um, retwists on clients that have... Can I spell therapeutic? Okay. For clients that have um, dandruff issues and things, I don't have too many clients that have... Um, bad dandruff as far as like their locks but if you have moderate to mild dandruff the design essentials therapeutics is a medicated um hair grease situation let me see if i can pull that up and don't use this if you ain't got dandruff issues if you if you just got dry scalp because you ain't washing your hair this, this ain't for you like i don't want you messing up your scalp using something medicated. It has 1.8 sal salicylic, salicylic acid, yes. Okay, um, it is a hair grease situation, but it is rather light. Um, I believe it has 
Does it have peppermint? It has menthol. That's what it is. It has menthol. Okay. Um, I just started using this again. Um, of course, they kind of taught us how to use design essentials and, and things in beauty school. But I kind of gravitated away from it because um, I they just overpriced. Ooh, but they are selling it for the low low on Amazon. Eleven dollars, bitch. Let me find out. Um, guns don't kill people. People kill people. <laughs> Do you ever steam locks? Mm mm. I feel like steaming locks would be really softening. I don't need it. I I don't need it. Like by the time I'm done with their hair, their hair is soft, and that's without conditioner. <laughs> um, for locks on thinner hair, would you avoid? And then here's the thing with steamers. I find it like, I mean, the steamers feel great and shit while you sitting under there and your hair is wet and you come on out. But then after the fact, is it not just me or does your hair get all crispy dry after the fact? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. For thinner locks, would you avoid styles after retwist? I got my first retwist, and a woman had tried to style them, but I didn't like it because it was given scalp. Um, that's that's a matter of personal preference. Maybe it just wasn't the right style for you. But um, if you have thinner hair, your your retwist is going to look rather scalpy. If you prefer, you can do um, you know styles on. A not so fresh retwist, like after it kind of gets a little more frizzy and puffy or whatever. I actually was just watching a video, and I thought this woman's lock style was really cute. Um, oh, I did not mean to go there. Go back. And her her hair wasn't a fresh retwist. She went to court and she just had her hair done up. All right, Judge Faye, don't give me no no copyright situation. Yeah, you know, like, you know, she got her, her afro going on, her little, you know, but she still look put together, you know? Like, you can tell it's been a while since she had a retwist, and she probably ain't had time to go to that loctician, but she said, bitch, I am not showing up on Judge Faith looking a mess. Not me. Mm-mm. While she pulled these locks back, okay? Okay. She ended up winning the case, too. All right. <clears throat> do you have any tips on how to grow your locks faster leave it alone and take care of it keep it clean keep it hydrated and um keep up with your maintenance and don't do anything damaging it's just that simple keep it simple i my routine is once a month shampoo two or three times however long it takes to get that hair clean retwist Leave it alone, moisturize it as often as you need to in between, which should be, uh, definitely don't overdo it, but it should be about once or twice a week. After that, retwist after four weeks. That's it. Rinse, repeat. Keep it simple. It don't, mm -mm. when you start trying to force your hair to do things like make it grow faster and make it be longer, that's when you start damaging. See, it's when you start making your hair do things that it ain't naturally going to do that you get all the issues. I want my hair to be smoother. I'm going to relax it. All right, now you got damage. I want it to be straighter, so I'm going to flat iron it. Now you got damage. Oh, I want it to be more hydrated, so I'm going to just steam for like two hours like the fuck I was doing. Now you got damage. Just, just leave it alone. Just take care of it. Do you like lock jewelry and sprinkles? I like lock jewelry. I don't like sprinkles. I don't like lock sprinkles. It, it I don't know. It makes the locks look dirty to me. Like It's like like specks on it i don't like it that's just me but it ain't my hair if you got lock sprinkles i ain't talking about you it's cute on you it just ain't cute for me it ain't cute for me um let me see Mm, this one doesn't look as bad, but I think it's because of how she color coordinated. I've seen people just put like random shit up in locks, but 
uh, it's alright. It ain't it ain't my cup of tea. Now, if you want to put some Swarovski crystals up in there, then all right, we can we can talk about that. But <laughs> um, yeah, I'm good on that. I liked um I like more um dangle jewelry. I like um like I I like shells and things like that's that's what I like. Let's see what it hers look like. Okay, y'all see that? Mm-hmm. All right, she got some too. She got, yeah, you know. They, they, they cute or whatever. You know, you got a little bracelet up in your locks. Oh, I didn't mean to click on it. See, now y'all got me clicking on shit. Um, how long would you wait to put jewelry on instant locks, though? If it's instant locks, you should be fine. <laughs> you should be able to put it on there. Um, that reminds me, SB says something about the white bulbs. Can you do anything for that? Uh, caution, if you're allergic to aspirin, don't use hair or skin products with salicylic acid. Oh, thank you for that. Didn't know that. Good thing I asked my clients if they're allergic to anything. Uh, was I answering something? I think that's it. <laughs> the faces. <laughs> Those sprinkles look like a rash. I want. Oh my god! You know what? Damn, I can't even push the button. All right, y'all. I guess that's it. We've been on for an hour and a half. If you got any other questions about these locks, um, you can wait till our next. Q&A situation, which will be at the end of the month. I always do Q&As, live Q&As at the end of the month on Wednesday night. Okay. I need to get on over to my gaming channel so we can get the streaming like I was supposed to do yesterday that I did not do. All right. I thank you all so much for watching your questions. And I hope you learned and took something from this video. All right. Until the next one, be blessed. And I will see you all on Thursday for our watch party. Bye.